Welcome to the Santa Cruz Coffee Break. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on Apple Podcasts, please follow, hit the like button, or any subscribes. It really helps us with the algorithms. Santa Cruz Coffee Break is produced by the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum. All opinions are those of the speakers. We invite you to join us on the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum at SCGCPF for more fun. Now, let's get on with this installment of Santa Cruz Coffee Break. We'd like to welcome you all to number 32 of the Santa Cruz Guitar Players podcast. And with all good things, after we've developed a series along interviewing Richard Hoover and interviewing guitar players, we decided to send the truck into the ditch and start interviewing dealers, which is um, a brand new thing for us. And uh, so here comes a, a, new, a new path for us. And um, we'd like to introduce to you Mike Starber from Sylvan Music. And uh, Mike? These, these are specifically guitar dealers. We should be specific about that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially California. But um, Mike is, uh, Mike, how long have you been with Sylvan? 17 years. Wow. Wow. Where, uh, where'd you come from? How'd you, how'd you start there? Give us some um, story. I, I'm originally from uh, Maryland, in the DC suburbs, uh, hmm. Bethesda Chevy Chase area. Uh, and I came out here in the fall of 99 and worked a few different jobs and then was able to get a job here in 2004 uh, after being a longtime customer. Um, and kept pestering Albert every time I was in here, Albert, the owner of the shop, I, I would say, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, if you guys ever need <laughs> more work or more workers, uh, let me know. Uh, I'd love to work here. And finally, one day he called me and said there was an opening. And uh, I was doing carpentry apprenticeship at the time, which I was not very good at. And so I was looking for something else. And so it worked out perfectly. So you said you were a customer. Yeah. Music background. Um, my music background, I mean, I, I didn't start playing guitar till I was 18, so my freshman year in college. Um, but once it started, it was just a waterfall of love. Uh, and I just would spend all day playing guitar, um, trying to learn every song I'd ever heard on the radio or sung along to in the shower. Um, and just tried to soak it all up. Um, and when I moved to town, of course, I went to all the different guitar stores, of which there were a few back then, uh, still a few now. But uh, it was really obvious that this was the coolest shop in town. So I would, you know, on days off from work, I would come hang out here and play guitars. I don't think I ever bought a guitar here because <laughs> I didn't have any money. But I would spend hours here, especially once I started doing carpentry and the, it was weather dependent because we were framing houses. So on rainy days when there was no work, uh, I would just come in here for three, four hours um, and noodle on all the guitars and chat with the employees here who were all so kind and became friendly with some of them and friendly with Albert, the owner. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, I was familiar enough here that when they had an opening, they thought of me. So what do you know about the history of Sylvan? How long has it been in Santa Cruz? And when did they start carrying uh, Santa Cruz guitars? Um, so Albert started Sylvan actually with Jeff Trogett in 1984. Huh? Uh, they were both building guitars and repairing guitars from a, in a little shop. I don't know if it was the, the one downtown at that point. It might have been in a shed on the west side. <clears throat> but <clears throat> excuse me. Not long after they started, Jeff decided to go off on his own and, and do building full time. And Albert basically ha had enough people coming to him for repairs and that and he was getting, you know, old junker guitars and fixing them up and building guitars. So he figured why not open a storefront? So he got a spot downtown on, uh, let me get this right, Maple and Chestnut, I think it is. Um, Wow. We're across the street from where 7-Eleven is now um, and had a little shop there and then moved to this location on Mission Street in 92, I think it was. 
Um, and I don't know when exactly the relationship with Santa Cruz guitar started. I think it was in the late eighties. Um, and Richard and Albert, I'm sure had known each other just from being in town and running the same circles. And uh, Albert started selling Richard's guitars. Um, and I don't know much more of the history beyond that in terms of what guitars they were carrying. I think back then he was only making dreadnoughts and maybe starting with OMs a little bit. Um, so, and, and I'm, all the early examples I've seen are Koa dreadnoughts. So probably some of those. Um, but uh, yeah, they've had a great relationship. Um, and we've been the sole, you know, Santa Cruz dealer uh, in this area since then. Uh, I didn't realize that Jeff Trougott had something to do with Sylvan. Uh, Jeff actually worked with Richard at Santa Cruz, from what I understand, uh, developing the FS model. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how all that fits in. Yeah, um, I don't know where that falls in the timeline. That's a great question. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. I don't, it, maybe it was concurrently when he and Albert were doing the early Sullivan thing uh, or, or right after. I don't know. So that, that was a pretty revolutionary guitar design. Oh, I love the FS. Yeah, it's um, it's such a cool guitar and pretty different from the rest of the stuff they make. I mean, it's uh, Richard has said it's loosely based on a Gibson J185 body shape, but it's pretty loose. Um, <laughs> because of that, it's really maybe the only thing in the Santa Cruz stable that is not re really based on a historic Martin or Gibson, um, which is pretty cool. And that long headstock um, and you know, the wood binding and blue purple, it's, it's uh, a really great guitar. It's one I always try and keep on the wall here. Well, I, think. I was gonna say in the, in the discussion or the, the podcast we did with Richard recently for the 45th anniversary, I got the impression that the FTC, the, the carved back flat top guitar actually came first. And from there, they kind of developed the F model, uh, FS, FJZ, which, you know, I think only like six people in the world have seen um, and, and so on and so forth. So that, that's kind of intriguing. And especially with um, Jeff being a part of Sylvan and working yeah, with Richard, it, it's a little smaller world there than I had been imagining. Oh man, this, the world of Santa Cruz Luthiers is, is smaller, especially that generation. Um, uh, they all, it was incestuous, I guess the word, they're all influencing <laughs> each other. <laughs> um, work, you know, helping with each other's designs. And that's so evident too, which I'm sure you found talking with Richard and, and other builders. Um, uh, Richard has always been so into sharing knowledge um, with a, you know, a guy like me running a shop or another builder or just people asking about guitars. He doesn't, you know, hold any, any secrets close to his chest. He's, he's an open book with, with building. And there are a number of builders in Santa Cruz now and from days prior uh, who he helped immensely with that. So, and Jeff being one of them. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a good heritage to be a part of and uh, a lot of good stuff has come out of it um what do you guys offer at sylvan uh what don't we offer um in terms of instruments we've got most of the stringed instruments um guitars basses mandolins ukuleles dulcimers harps uh, banjos, lap steels. Um, what am I leaving out? Is there a is there a tin whistle there? <clears throat> or, there is uh, tin. Yeah, you do you do have some, huh? We you just did. We did a really interesting interview with Tim Connell, and mm -hmm. um, uh, a man, mandolinist from Portland. And um, I'm tense studying with him, and he went to Berkeley studying tin whistle. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I, I'm more shocked that they have a tin whistle program at Berkeley. Um, <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. They, they kind of, they, he didn't have, he didn't declare a major when he went in. And um, which is un, really unusual for Berkeley. And uh, he just, he fell in love with the Irish scene in the bars and just, and really 
majored in tin whistle. Uh, mandolin that's, didn't come for it, it's really hysterical, actually. That's really funny. It, it it is. He's a uh, um, quite a quite a unique human being. <laughs> you guys do repairs. We do, yeah, extensive repairs. That's that's um, Albert's strong suit. He is an incredible luthier and repair restorer, um, and so we work on all kinds of stuff here. Um, we do everything except finish work because we don't have a spray booth. Um, but yeah, repairs, new and old. Um, we do rentals, we did lessons. Hopefully someday we'll do lessons here again when everyone's comfortable being in little rooms right in front of each other's faces. Um, and appraisals, uh, the, whole, the whole shebang here. I, and I gotta say, you have one of the biggest collections of guitar strings for sale. I think of any shop I've ever seen, um, it's almost mind boggling trying to make a decision sometimes when you want to try something new or different. I mean, yeah. I'm sold on Santa Cruz strings, but when you want to try something else, you look at that wall behind the counter and you just kind of glaze over. Oh, totally. It's actually, it, I felt like when I started, it was even more extensive. I, that was one of Albert's goals when he really decided to build up the, the storefront was he wanted to have a really insane selection of strings um, and that was achieved in spades. And I feel like it, since I've been running the store for you know the better part of 15 years now, um, I've tried to slim that down a little bit because I felt like it was a little too much. Like when you have that many choices, it, it almost hurts you rather than helps. Um, so we've kept a lot still. Um, but not quite as many as, as when I started. But it's a good thing. I mean, everybody's got different flavors and you know, as evidence with the success of Santa Cruz strings, there are new strings coming out all the time that may take off and may be the next big thing. So it's worth trying new stuff sometimes. I wanna I want tip my hat to your pick selection and your pedal selection. I glaze over at the pedals. I can't even I can't even isolate one out of them because your your selection is really so great. But you really do stock picks. And you know, when you start looking at how much difference a really good sounding pick makes over a yeah. thing. I mean I can't I, I don't buy them anywhere else because you're you have what I use. You know, well, thank you for that. You know, um, right? and that's another thing that it's it, it behooves us to have that kind of selection of picks because there are so many, like even more so than strings now. I mean, Dunlop alone makes I don't know how many hundreds of different picks. Um, and then you get into the fancy stuff, um, the Wiggins and blue chips and whatnot. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's good to have a variety. And what's nice about those is you can have a huge variety and it doesn't take up much space, um, unlike instruments. Yeah, just it just I think it's probably more of an edu a staff education, you know, because <laughs> yeah. every once in a while I'll say I want I want that wig and, and somebody will look at me like, you know, I'm from plan nine from outer space. And and it, I think it's just it, but it's wonderful to have it there. Yeah. What's really blown my mind is how how many of those blue chip picks we sell. Yeah. I was so reluctant to, to carry those for years, despite people asking for them from time to time. And I'm just like, can there really be that many people ready to spend? $40 on a pick. And then we got an employee a couple years ago who was a, a firm believer in those picks and used one for years and convinced me to try them. And so we've stopped them for three or four years now and we sell a ton. It's, wow. it's crazy. I mean, you know, but I, it does make sense when you think about it. We're selling guitars for yeah, upwards of ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Someone spending that kind of dough can can spend forty bucks on a pick, and even people who aren't ready to spend that, you know, serious gigging musicians who might not have a really nice guitar care about the tone of their picks and believe they can hold on to one for months, if not years, which is more of a, a, a daunting task than parting with the money. I feel like actually keeping it and not losing the pick is the harder part. Um, but uh, yeah, we we sell a lot of those. It's nuts. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's fantastic. Well, and Mike, one of the reasons we, we wanted to start with this this series of podcasts with you is, uh, despite or 
regardless of your charming personality and everything else, Sylvan yeah. music is right immediately adjacent practically to Santa Cruz guitar. Mm -hmm. And when people from all over the world come to Santa Cruz to go to San the Santa Cruz Guitar Company and take the tour and talk to Richard and learn about the building of the guitars, the very next thing they want to do is play some and you can't do that at Santa Cruz Guitar Company. There is nothing there for you to pick up and play um, with a couple of very rare exceptions. And the obvious thing is to drive over to Sylvan. Um, tell us about that. Well, yeah, you, you've probably yeah. met people from all over the world who've come there just to try out a Santa Cruz guitar. It's true, it's true. Near, nearly every day someone comes in looking specifically for Santa Cruz guitars um, and yeah, like you're saying, one of the great things about them is, I mean, right now they're not doing tours, obviously, but uh, the fact that they do tours there and so many people come to do that and then come right to us. So we get to, to bask in their afterglow um, <laughs> from being in the shop and without fail, every one of them always says like, you know, I can't believe, you know, we, we booked this tour and we're so excited about it and figured, you know, one of the office people would be showing us around the factory, but it's Richard. Richard showed us around and he took so much time with us and he answered all of our questions and he was so nice. And that alone just gives people such a good feeling about Richard and about the company and the guitars. Um, so it's such a head start already. Um, but then, yeah, they come in and they are so stoked to play all the guitars and Oftentimes we'll buy one or order one uh, or have more questions that they had forgotten to ask Richard that usually I can answer, um, <laughs> but sometimes I, I have to defer back to them. Uh, but yeah, it's, it is really kind of a, the, the, its own tourist destination here in Santa Cruz, which is already a tourist town, but there are lots of people that come just for the guitars. Um, and it's cool that we are, like you're saying, the kind of de facto showroom. So after they, they take that tour, of course they want to play guitar, so they have to come here. Um, and yeah, it benefits yeah. all of us. Both of my boys went to UC Santa Cruz. So it was always to me, you know, just a fantastic excuse to drive down to Santa Cruz, of course, to see one of the boys who were at school, yeah. but I always made sure that the trips were done on the days when Santa Cruz was open and Sylvan was open. And if I got there earlier, I got there late, I made sure to arrange my visit with the kids uh, in such a way as I had a chance to stop at Sylvan and try and swing by Santa Cruz and say hi as well. Uh, so you're definitely a, a great destination uh, place. And, and oh. every time you walk in, the inventory is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, thank you. That's. Uh... A point of pride for sure. I mean, we're lucky to be the, the dealer for so many incredible brands, uh, aside from Santa Cruz, that it really blows people's minds when they come in and they, if they don't know about us or they've never been, um, or they've just been driving by for years and they finally come in and they're just like, you know, the look of wonder on people's faces. It's great. It's an incredible story. I had no idea that it was this kind of deep inventory um so that always feels good it, yeah. it, it it had to be fairly deep because when i was in there about a month ago you had the only eastman les paul jr yeah on the planet unless unless there was one in i think there was one in belgium but it was it it blew me away it really i almost reached for the pocket it was it was yeah. really close um yeah. and it was just great to be able to go in and, and play it you know and just your vision you, you think about it so much you know you, you look on the internet and everything like that but to physically put your hands on it was was uh and it was a, it was a, it was a decision for me that that was only available because you had it in stock yeah yeah uh we're lucky to get really cool stuff like that i mean i order a lot i mean i i'm in the incredibly lucky position where i get to kind of curate the store as if it were my own collection or what I would love to see hanging on the walls of my living room if, if my living room looked like this. Um, and that that kind of electric guitar offerings from Eastman and a lot of stuff they make, uh, I've been ordering a lot of. Um, and it, especially since the pandemic, 
stuff like that does not stay for long because there's not many of them, you know. It was a snooze lose for me. <laughs> Happens. Um, which you just said something really interesting about your kind of curating what's mm -hmm. going on there. And with SCGC now becoming a complete custom shop, you're not ticking a box like give me a J200 and give me a, you know, give me a D28 and give me this and give me this. You physically have to specify what you want from them. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a level of knowledge on your part that is so deep and understanding of your customer base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, it's, I mean, first of all, it's so cool what a custom shop they are. I mean, when you think about everything that they offer, you know, in terms of what you can customize on a guitar, it's, it's everything, which is so cool. There's not many other guitar companies where you get to choose every single facet of the guitar, you know, um, in every way. So that alone is cool. Um, and yeah, that's been one of the fun parts of the job is just coming up with creations in my head of what I think would, would do well here uh, based on what we've sold in the past, what I see people playing out at shows uh, or posted online or suggestions of, uh, of things that are cut from customers that have come through here or even something that a customer ordered for themselves. And I thought, oh, that would be cool to have here. And so I ordered one of those. But, make two, um, make two. What's that? Make two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, we're lucky to have so much space in the store dedicated to Santa Cruz that, that we can really go deep. And, and because they offer so many different models, uh, we really want to represent all of them for the most part. Um, so I've constantly got you know, at least a dozen or, or more things on order from them um, that I'm constantly adding to and, and selling from. Uh, and that's super fun. I mean, there's, there's so much variety. Uh, there's, and, and every one sounds different, you know, in, in uh, an Adirondack and Cocobolo OM that I had last year might sound incredibly different from one that comes next month. Uh, and that's part of the fun, you know. Everyone is different, magical, and uh, would they get insane? I mean, the, the, it's just you know, Richard gets all the choicest pieces of tone woods, and everybody knows it. So it's uh, it's really fun to to curate in that way. I, I think it's really. I think there's there, there's got to be an amazing trust between Albert and you, and that. He lets you do that, and really, totally. you're yeah. you're laying some heavy money on the line. I mean, you're right. you're you're not buying picks. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> yeah, you are buying picks, but you're not buying these aren't picks. You know, these are yeah. This is a commitment, and oh, especially yeah. now, it's really a commitment to say to somebody, "Well, yeah, this is here's the price." Yeah, yeah, it, it is, and I, I I love Albert for that. He's been really trusting of me for you know, pretty much since day one. The manager that was here before me did a great job of having a, a really cool variety of instruments, but it was really out there. And there was a lot of stuff that was never gonna sell. Um, and so I think after I had been here for maybe a year and a half, two years, I remember talking with Al about really trying to focus more on the quality of instrument that we have here. And soon after that, he decided to let me do the, the ordering of, of all the instruments. Um, and, um, and it's been, I, I take pride in that and, and it's been really fun. And, and it's a, a fun responsibility. I mean, because I know the reputation this place has and the, the kind of clientele we're getting here. And so I try and stock accordingly. And, and that means having some really cool low end stuff too. Like we have some neat stuff for under a thousand bucks that, you know, it is, it is great, great deals. Um, but yeah, the real fun obviously is getting to order the Santa Cruz's and the Loudons and Martin custom shops and goodalls and all the vintage stuff. 
So yeah. So have you noticed any general trends or changes over the 15 years that you've been taking orders and buying guitars in terms of customer expectations or customer requests or or just what is selling? Gosh, the the one constant I can say for sure is the popularity of the ukulele has not wavered at all. It was starting to hit that steep incline right when I started here and it has not slowed down at all. So that's been really fun. You know, obviously not guitar related. Uh, although Santa Cruz Guitars was making some ukuleles for a short while that were really amazing. And I will take this opportunity to, 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 to poke them to try and make those again, even though I know that's, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah. But um, aside from that, I mean, I think in general, big guitars like jumbos and dreadnoughts have been on a, on a, on a slow decline for a few decades. Um, obviously, there are still a lot of people that love them and only want to play dreadnoughts uh, or jumbos. But I think more and more smaller guitars, OMs, double O's, triple O's, single O's, and the like, um, have become increasingly popular because they're more comfortable to play. You know, simple fact. Um, travel guitars. What's that? Travel guitars. Yeah, I mean, travel guitars too. Those have become, I mean, yeah, 20 years ago, there was nobody making a $10,000 travel guitar. And now everybody does. Um, so that shows you that that is a market to, to target. You know, there are people willing to spend that on a guitar that is portable. That sounds incredible too. Um, I think the, the point towards more vintage based stuff has certainly grown. You know, most companies are making either a, a straight D18, a D28, OM18, OM28 copy down to the specs. So, you know, Adirondack tops, Adirondack bracings, Gallup bracing, um, lightly built. That That is certainly a trend um, that has been on the uptick. Um, and then just, you know, uh, the breadth of different tonewood options has been fun to explore as all these companies get access to, you know, as Brazilian becomes more and more astronomically priced, everyone's looking for, for different options in the Rosewood family uh, or stuff that looks or sounds like that. So watching that expand has been really cool. Um, and I don't know, you know, beyond that, I don't know what trends there are. You know, just people, well, yeah. I was just wondering, you know, when people order custom guitars, do you find that there are things that, that people are really interested in or specific about when it comes to uh, decoration or, um, you know, pickups or fingerboard uh, width? Yeah, things. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Most people do not go for the ostentatious uh, look, you know, for the, the lots of pearl inlay. Uh, most folks want to keep it on the simpler side, maybe a, a sunburst, maybe a custom inlay they designed uh, or their kit designed. Um, and then, uh, but beyond that, yeah, there's, everybody's got different flavors, you know, different top woods and, and what kind of binding and look they want. Um, pickups, we deal mostly with K&K, &K, Fishman and LR Bags who are all making really great pickups. Um, and again, when it comes to the fancy acoustics from Santa Cruz, good all loud and what have you, most of those are not getting ordered with pickups. Um, when they are, it's a pretty, you know, it, in terms of what we're doing, it's on the simpler side, like the Fishman Matrix under saddle, sometimes maybe the LR Bags Anthem, that's been the real popular dual source pickup for the, the past five or 10 years, however long they've been around for the anthems. Um, we do a lot of K&K &K pickups because they sound so good and they're so simple that, you know, it's, it's just three little hot dots to a jack and that's it. No preamp, no battery. Um, and so that's definitely our most popular. Um, yeah, you did, Al did a, uh, Albert did a uh, amazing Style 42 inlay in my OM. Uh, PW that I bought from you guys and I brought it back and he did this really beautiful cat's eye style 42 inlay for me it really set the guitar apart 
and he did it like from scratch. He, he, I think so. I mean, it 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 came oh, in it cool. came into the shop and 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 he came out and and showed it to me, and I just figured he had done it. I don't know if it went to somebody else, but it was really oh yeah, sure, it was him. It was um, really is, beautiful. I love the forty two style inlay. I think that's a super tasty uh, fingerboard pattern. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's he is, he's a magician when it comes to that kind of stuff. He's, he's done so many uh, jobs like that over the years. He is a fountain of knowledge um, that is fun to tap into. Uh, I am continually learning stuff from that guy. Yeah. What a what a what a great relationship between employer employee, um, and yeah, it, it reflects in the store. I hope so. I mean, yeah, I hope it, it, it from a, looking outside the box, I think it would be evident that that you can tell there's love that goes goes on here, that, that there's a love of instrument, a passion behind it from, from the top down. And yeah, I mean, again, I'm so lucky that he trusts me to to order, you know, basically whatever I want uh, to, to fill the walls here. Um, and I've learned a lot from that. And it's been, it continues to be super fun. I mean, there's so much stuff out there and and not just, you know, buying the pieces and stocking them here is a big part of the fun, but also just learning about the history of all these guitars and, and instruments uh, has been amazing. I never would have thought that I would be this deep in the world of, of instruments and it's it still blows my mind well and santa cruz is such a special kind of magical place in the world as it is oh, yeah. um, you have a lot of musicians um who come through there as well so yeah. that's an opportunity that a, a lot of people in other music stores simply don't get as i mean you probably met some amazing people there I have, I have. It's been, it's one of the perks of the job. It's you never know what kind of musician is going to walk in, famous or otherwise, uh, who might sit down and just start shredding on on a guitar, and, and that happens once in a while. It's just like some of you I, I've never seen will sit down, and all of a sudden it's like your ears perk up. It's like whoa, like this guy knows what what he's doing, and and that's always fun um those moments of discovery um and then when the, the the musician who i do know comes in who you know will excite me and be like oh i forgot he's playing at Kumpler at the rio tonight and, and he came by and that's always fun because i get to chat with a musical hero and listen to them play or something like that and yeah there's cool perks like that so, so should I ask how many times you've heard Stairway to Heaven, or is that dating myself? No, no. <laughs> that, and I'm a giant fan of Wayne's World, so people are always referencing that scene, you know, the sign with, this, you know, no stairway. But nobody plays that. I, maybe because of that movie, nobody plays Stairway <laughs> at the music store, maybe even at home. Um, but for a long time, it was Smoke on the Water um that we we're hearing all the time and then seven nation army the white stripes song uh still is is like a go-to uh riff or the um uh nothing else matters i think that is the metallica song uh there's a handful of things that you hear a lot of luckily i'm not really sick of any of it, it it's not to the point of where i'll run over and like put my hand around the neck of the guitar and be like stop <laughs> that, that rarely happens luckily interesting yeah yeah uh, okay. fun stuff that 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 that, that it is and, and just as a, a historical note this interview is being done on the day of the first led zeppelin release in the united states wow today Today was 1968 was the first time Led Zeppelin one came out in the U.S. Pretty Boy, cool. that, that's pretty changing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's not a national holiday. My it God. should be. <laughs> it should be a music store holiday. You yeah. know, everybody gets a, you know, everybody gets a, um, I don't know what, what you, beer. I don't know, I don't know what you give away, you give away to, for, for like Zeppelin. 
What do you see for the future? Man, uh, all good things, I hope. <laughs> um, I don't see, it doesn't seem like any of this is slowing down, you know? There's, it, you hear it every year that we're in a golden age of Luthery and there are more and more amazing guitars being built this year than there were last year and there will be more next year than this year. Um, and that's super exciting. I mean, just seeing new stuff come in from a builder I've never heard of where I, my mind is blown with like, wow, this is amazing. I'm really glad you brought this in. Thanks for expanding my, my world because that's what it's all about is just more education, more learning about new brands, new builders. Um, I, I gotta think that all the brands that we're carrying are gonna continue making really cool stuff um, and take on new lines as they come through for things that I feel like would be a good fit here. Um, you know, the just when I think that the last old Martin in Santa Cruz has, has come in uh, to the shop, it, another one comes in from that was found under a bed or down in Scotts Valley or something. And, and that is always exciting, getting more vintage stuff in. I feel like the market is certainly going upwards pr price wise, like for new and vintage stuff is just going up and up. Uh, so I'm looking forward and also scared to see what, what some of these prices are gonna be in five, 10 years. Uh, I mean, when I started here, a Santa Cruz OM pre-war, we were selling them for 2,200 bucks. That's what I paid. Yeah. <laughs> and now I think the base model is 7,500. Yeah. And, and people are buying them left and right. I mean, and obviously way beyond that. So, uh, I mean, I think there are good trends. There's just in, in the world of building alone, there's really amazing stuff out there. And that is fun and exciting. I've got to imagine it's harder than ever to become a guitar builder um, because you almost have to start charging $10,000 per instrument from the get-go if, if you're going to make a living as it, at it, um, which seems unfathomable. But uh, I know people are making it happen and I know more will continue to make it happen and that's exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm impressed by the way that you add product. Um, I, w when I was in there last time, you know, the Nash line, you have the Nash line now and, and those are kind of underground, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, they're not, but they kind of are it, 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 and a good value, you yeah. know, it, oh, yeah. Uh, just, it, it, I think that's, 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 that's the real challenge to me of a retailer that they can find something that's unique and, and and special and a quality product sure you know, it's not, not not a piece of junk and it's kind of off the radar which is fascinating i, I doubt you find them the, at nam it's not that not nash no there's a, a lot of brands like that are not at nam and wouldn't really serve them to be at nam um but yeah that is one of the, the cool things is Finding something like that, uh, I mean, I think Nash was more established than other brands when we took them on, but it's fun helping uh, a younger brand come into the world, you know, and educating people about this acoustic or this electric or this pedal who may not have otherwise known about it. And it expands their world and makes the brand better known because um, that's how it all happens. That's how it all snowballs. Um, but there was a point where Santa Cruz was, was that brand, you know, and there was nobody else making guitars. Um, and that is fun to be, to be part of that. <clears throat> I'm, uh, um, how do you, what do you look for? I mean, where do you look? Are you reading guitar forums or, I mean, I suppose you're reading the trades. My understanding is forums pretty much went away and, 2017 you know yeah I, I don't spend really any time on the forums um I look on Instagram a lot that's that's the only like social media stuff I do but um I you know talk talking to people who come in here they're all people are always one invariable 
uh, constant that happens with customers is they want to talk about the gear they already have. They will start with a question about something we have and then be like, well, I've got this, 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 and this. And I wanted you to know that. Um, they're all very proud. Um, but learning about other brands that way, um, I read uh, some of the magazines, the guitar magazines that come out to stay a little up on it. And then I try to go to a lot of shows. That's always been a passion of mine is going to concerts. Um, that's, you know, prior to having a family, that's where most of my paycheck went, was going to shows in San Francisco and Santa Cruz and beyond, um, a big show pound, uh, and just seeing what kind of gear people are playing. Um, and that's turned me on to a lot of brands, um, just looking at stages. It's an incredibly um, organic approach. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, they're, they're getting played and, by touring musicians, and that's who knows the most. Uh, you know, if you're taking something out on the road and playing it every night, it's reliable, and that's a good uh, compass. And it's fun for them. Yeah. Oh, for you know, sure. Yeah. I really, uh, I, I really kind of object to uh, somebody saying, "I just want, I just want a cheap guitar for this, for stage." You know, I just want something crappy yeah. for the stage. Yeah. It's like, why bother? You know, I mean, why bother? Yeah, yeah. I get that you don't want to bring your, you know, your 1940 Martin on tour, but you should have something nice that sounds good for everyone's ears and for for your ears, you know. Uh, you're going to be playing every night. And uh, granted, there are good, cheap, cheaper guitars out there that sound good with pickups, but there's a, a, a good in-between, you know and a lot to choose from. So the next time uh, a, a brown um, uh, Cali girl case comes in from under the bed, <laughs> yeah. call me, yeah. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what's funny is I, I, I don't know why, but I just started hearing that term, the Cali girl case. Um, and I, I, I bought a, an old Gibson acoustic recently and it, it the guy was using that term and I was like, oh, Cali girl, eh? Okay. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's, all these terms get thrown around and I'm not privy to all of them yet. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Pretty funny. No, the, 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 yeah, the world of vintage stuff, there's, I, I've learned so much, but I mean, there's still so much out there that, that I, I have to work on. It, 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 I, I have, I have such, tremendous respect for you because there are so many fakes now yeah you know, there are so many fakes and it's so it's so easy to do i was reading a reading something this morning this guy you know he's like he's looking on craigslist and he sees this gibson that he's going to buy you know and and he goes he goes to meet the guy and it's obviously a fake and the guy kind of said it and he said I was looking over my shoulder when I walked away from him because I didn't know he was going to shoot me or something you know that yeah, the, yeah. the, the, that's it but it's obviously a fake and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there right now that is oh man I mean when you're looking at the prices of some of these the real ones you've got to yeah when it gets that into six figures you've got to think that there's somebody out there trying to make fake ones, you know, if, if you're, if you can, I guess if you can make one that can be passed off as, as a $150,000 guitar and you put $15,000 worth of, of materials and labor into it, maybe it's worth it if you're, if you have no ethics, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, that's scary. I mean, I, I try to be really careful about, who I buy from and what I buy. And at this point I can spot a fake uh, and I know, you know, who's too shady and to stay away from uh, if they're bringing something in uh, that they don't know about. Um, and that certainly happened. Um, so yeah, it, it's not, I, I mitigate that risk at every turn. So it, it's been a long time since there's been anything like that coming through here, but I'm sure they're out there. I, I, I think it's an incredible um, testament to, to Sylvan that you know what you're buying. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it, it makes a big difference. That's why people want to want to buy from a dealer as opposed to Craigslist because you don't know what you're buying. Um, unless unless you're incredibly informed. Sure. Sure. You know, but. Well, and, and a lot of those older guitars, you have to be careful that there may have been um, a poorly applied repair at some point in the past or an adjustment or things inside have been shaved or cut or trimmed in, in the hope of avoiding a, a slightly more expensive repair. Absolutely. Um, happy, happy Trom was telling us about the Martin he got that he was so excited about because it sounded so damn good. Uh, but he learned, you know, within a year or so that the reason it sounded so good is the braces had been shaved down to virtually nothing and it essentially self-destructed in his hands. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, everything I buy, I go over with a fine tooth comb. Uh, it's always more comfortable buying old acoustic things because there's not, uh, you know, you can spot repairs really easily. Stick in a mirror and a light inside, you can see all the guts, you know, what, what's been cracked, what's been replaced, what's been re-glued. Um, it's, it's a lot easier now for me to spot uh, finished touch-ups or refinished jobs. Um, but with electric stuff, it is a lot harder. Um, and we don't get into the, the, like the Les Paul range that we were talking about before that are six figures, because that's too scary. Because then people are like, you know, scrutinizing down to every screw and, and bit of solder on the pickups. Um, and I can't spot that. There's a handful of people in the country who, you know, folks trust to buy something like that from, and I'm not one of them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and I don't think I want to be because that's a little too much responsibility. Uh, <laughs> a quarter million dollar guitar and saying that everything is original. Um, that's, that's a lot, um, but I've got I've gotten to have a, a very good eye for most of the old acoustic and electric stuff that comes through here, um, and I've got good resources to tap when I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, so that's nice. So for people who aren't going to be able to walk into Sylvan and try out guitars, um, but they want to buy something or order something, do you work with people across the country? Are you willing to ship and to give advice sure. and to make oh, yeah. recommendations and order things? And Absolutely. We ship uh, all over the country. We ship internationally from time to time, too. Um, and, and yeah, vintage, new um, custom orders, all the companies we're dealers of, we take custom orders for, and it's certainly not limited to walk-ins. You know, I deal with people on the phone or via email all the time who are buying stuff off the floor here or doing custom orders. Um, and thanks to communications like this, uh, it is easier now than ever, um, which, which is great too. I mean, Obviously we've been serving the local community here for decades, um, but there's not really, you know, nowadays to be successful, you have to be for everybody. You know, you have to have a good online presence. You have to be able to talk to people on the phone about stuff they want to buy. Uh, otherwise you're going to get left behind. And I feel like we've been lucky on that front to, to get the jump on it. I mean, even before I started here, they had a great website. Um, established um which you know in 2004 was still kind of in in the fairly infancy of of, uh, of the internet um, yeah your, your website is fantastic thanks thanks yeah, it's, it's come a long way it's fantastic stuff. i'm proud of it now I, I, it more and more when i'm looking at other stores online i right when i think like our our website needs to be updated i'll be looking at other shops and be like oh my god how how are they operating with a website that looks like this? And it makes me feel really good about our site. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it, it, you, gotta, you gotta do that kind of stuff because it's not just local anymore. We're appealing to, to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, have any uh, last words, words of wisdom, anything you wanna share, anything you wanna say? Oh man, uh, I don't know. I. I I will reiterate how lucky I feel to be a part of Sylvan and to be a part of the extended Santa Cruz guitar family and just to be in this world. 
Um, I've learned so much and met so many incredible people and heard so much incredible music and put my hands on instruments that I wouldn't have otherwise uh, been able to touch, which is really amazing. Um, and uh, I hope it continues. I mean, I, my, my plan is to, to buy this store from Albert when he retires and I want to, to keep this going uh, for the foreseeable future. The, the world needs shops like this um, and there's not as many as there used to be. And I love doing this. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's fun. It's it shows. Work every day. It, well, it, yeah. it shows. And that's why we think we wanted to, to do this podcast with you is because um, Santa Cruz Guitar, where we started, um, is such a strong supporter of local dealerships. And you are the closest local dealership to the mothership. Um, and you've had a great relationship uh, with Santa Cruz for as long as they've been around to the best of our knowledge. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, one of my joys was going down to visit my boys at UC Santa Cruz and to stop at Sylvan. And, and we'll go out here at the end of this podcast for people who are watching it on YouTube. I have a couple of pictures of Mike here with uh, Eric Clapton's FTC when it finally got restored at Santa Cruz. And uh, you will never see a happier guy than this. <laughs> we'll put those pictures up here to go out. <laughs> that was so cool. I still have uh, a fret that uh, from that guitar that uh, <laughs> taken out one of the frets that had had been played by Clapton that still has some of his DNA uh, attached to it somehow. Uh, I, will, I will forever treasure that fret. That's funny. I I I I I have a, a restoration project that I have the threats from too. Yeah. That's funny. I wouldn't wouldn't think that that would be something you would save. I I thought I was pretty weird for saving them. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've always been a huge Eric Clapton fan. Um, you know, a little less after this past year, but the guy's made incredible music. Um, and is a great guitar player and had an insane guitar collection. You know, uh, and. Uh, yeah, when, when I heard that that guitar was was going to Santa Cruz for restoration, uh, I think that was when Stephen Stram was still there doing their repairs and restorations. Uh, and he's a friend. And so I was chatting with him there. And I was like, oh, man, is there any chance I could have one of the frets that you took out? And he's like, yeah, for sure. Uh, and I feel like he probably kept one, too, because he's a smart guy. And it's sure a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, you know, there's there are little pieces of Clapton finger skin stuck under that fret um, that who knows what song he was playing on it at that point, but that's pretty cool. That's you know, fantastic. One of, one of the, the, the benefits, one of the perks uh, uh, of, of this job. That my, kind of stuff. Mike, I can't thank you enough. You've been incredibly uh, gracious. My pleasure. My uh, pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for, you know, shining a light on all these different facets of uh, Santa Cruz guitar. Well, that's, that's one of the perks of our job is to get to, to talk to people like you and, and go over uh, these kinds of things. So, you know, thank you for your time. And uh, we just got to say, everybody, you know, there will be links to Sylvan Music. There will be links, of course, to Santa Cruz Guitar Company. And uh, uh, if you are in the market for a guitar, uh, even if you don't live in Santa Cruz, or a, pick. a good person to call. <laughs> <laughs> I, he, he might not take all your pick calls, but thank you, Mike. We'll uh, um, we'll make sure that uh, you get a copy of this, and you guys can do with it what you like, and um, we'll we'll spread it around. And you've been incredibly gracious. And is wow. it a beautiful day up there? It is. It's like it's a, it's seventy five degrees and sunny. This was the first morning I can remember in in a while where it was like not foggy at all this morning it was yeah it was first clear thing. here clear here yeah. when the sun came up and it was like well let's see we had no sky july and we had no sun august you know and yeah. it's almost the end of september and it's still we still haven't seen anything and today it's like it's summer yeah it's just yeah. beautiful 65 yeah, degrees down here and gorgeous so thank you so much um thank you guys get out and enjoy it a little bit have a fantastic afternoon um, and uh Give these give these guys a, a shot, folks. Perfect. Thank you guys. Please. Right, thank you. Peace out. We hope you enjoyed this installment of the Santa Cruz Coffee Break. 
For more music-related fun, please join the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum at scgcpf or santacruzguitarplayers.com. If you have any questions or possible podcast topics, please contact us. If you have a product or service that you feel would be of value to our listeners, please consider adding your support and keeping the coffee pot on. Contact us for more information. We ask that you hit the like, follow, bell, or bookmark buttons so we can keep you informed of upcoming podcast episodes. We hope you enjoyed Santa Cruz Coffee Break. Now it's time to go play your guitar.